our children may be dismissed to children's church. And as they go, if you could turn to the book of Matthew. Uh, we're looking again at uh, some things of Jesus' life when he was just uh, beginning. And you know, last week we talked about uh, being a servant of the Lord and following the Lord and growing in Christ. And <laughs> this is a snappy title, Jesus Was Baptized. I stayed up all night thinking of that title. And uh, Jesus was baptized for many reasons. And as we read in this passage, then you know the story. Uh, tells a little bit about John the Baptist. Uh, baptism was not a new thought to the Israelites. When someone came from another religion or had no religion and they wanted to become Jewish, they called them proselytes. And they would be uh, come over to the Jewish faith. They were to be baptized. And then at the temple, they had these things called mikvahs, which were pools for washing and cleansing. And the people would go and cleanse themselves before they came into the house of God to worship. And uh, it was a ceremonial thing and also probably a physical thing because these people traveled everywhere by foot. And uh, sort of like God saying, not only physically do you need to clean up your act, but spiritually. You need to be clean from inside. So in Matthew chapter 3, Tells us this story. It says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. This was a sort of a barren area, see, even still to this day. A lot of people, you have to go, it's sort of like some places that you have to go, you have to plan to go to. It was not like on the beaten path of anything. And he said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we know prophetically that there was going to be someone who was going to come before the Messiah, and it was John the Baptist. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had this raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle with round his loins, and his meat was locusts and honey, and probably lost a lot of weight. I don't know. They went out to him, then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea. Everybody went to the wilderness to see this man who was preaching repentance. Some out of curiosity, and some I think being drawn of the Spirit because they believed the message. And John, being an early evangelist, was out there saying, we need to clean our hearts the best we can, and we have to have God work on the inside. And so it said in all the region around Jordan, and they were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins, symbolizing that their sins were washed away after they confessed them. So they were starting all over again. They were getting clean on the outside, and they were also clean on the inside. That's all important. Verse 7. When he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, of course, they were, they were the religious. They had no need in their lives. They thought they had arrived and everybody should be like them. They came to his baptism and he said very strongly, Oh, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, that wouldn't exactly endear you to that crew. Hey, a bunch of snakes. But what he was saying is, you know what, these people were probably not living so close to the Lord, and they were coming out of curiosity, maybe to fault find. Like, remember, Jesus did everything right, and they continued to find fault with him. Who has warned you? In verse 8, a wonderful verse, bring forth fruits, meet for repentance. One translation says, in keeping with your repentance. In other words, once you get saved, your behavior's got to change. That's what he says. And some people think, I'm good, I do the right behavior, so then I must be saved. That's not what it's about. You've got to get saved first, and then the behavior follows. Good preaching, Pastor. Verse 9, I'll I help me out. And, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able to, 
of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. In other words, you ain't so hot, sport. Kettering tree. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Your days are numbered. Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. John knew part of the plan, what God had called him to do. And his job was not to do the whole number. His job was just to point to the one that was coming in the name of the Lord, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. He will burn up the chaff of, with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee. So John sets it up. From Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. Wait a minute. Did Jesus do anything? I mean, doesn't the Hebrews say he who knew no sin became sin for us? Paul writes that too. But John forbade him saying, I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me? John had a certain awareness because he saw in one translation, one of the passages says, Behold, the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Is that in the book of John. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So then John suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. We get the setup here where John the Baptist is out calling people to repentance. He recognizes who Jesus is. You know, behold the Lamb of God. He takes away. And then Jesus says, it's necessary that I be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Righteousness is right living in the eyes of God. Why did Jesus get baptized? He was. And the simple answer is, well, he got baptized as a, uh, well, as an example for us. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6 about his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and we identify with him. But for us, baptism is more of a form and a ritual, but it's sort of like communion. It has to do with your heart. You can partake of it, and it means you got wet. Or you can say, you know what, I'm turning over a new leaf, and with the grace of God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a different person. I have chosen to let the washing and the word of God, it's a symbolic thing of what's already happened on the inside. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Heavenly Father, as we look into your word today, this passage is so familiar, it reminds us of things we need to do. Things that we need to be washed and cleansed, Lord, and available for you. I pray today as we look into your word that so many things would come to light that your spirit would deal with us in such a gentle way. Lord, we, we ask for your will to be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. John brought this new element of being baptized in water as a symbol of identification with a change. I've repented. I'm not going back to the break from the past. Much like the Israelites came out of Egypt and they came through the Red Sea and, and they left the past behind. Well, at least they left the Egyptians behind. There was still a lot of Egypt in the Israelites' heart. Uh, it didn't take them long to grumble and complain and say we could have gone back and we had it better. They forgot all the oppression, selective memory. You know, once we get saved, when we come up to the Lord and we are baptized, not just in water, well, when we are baptized in water in obedience to him, uh, we are saying, I'm leaving the past behind me. I am, I'm choosing to not, I'm making a clean cut. Some of you heard me say when uh, one of our evangelists in the Assembly of God grew up, he was a direct descendant of Muhammad. And that's when he committed his life to Christ, no one would baptize him in, in the Pakistan where he was because to do that meant a clean separation. He could no longer be Muslim. And the Muslim faith says whoever does that should be put to death. And the person who does a baptism, 
That'll put a little kink in your colon. You know, you better be a person of faith if you're going to take that step. And he says, you know, I wanted to do that because I wanted to follow the Lord in obedience and they wouldn't let me do that. Finally, a pastor said, okay, Christopher, I've seen your life and I'm willing to take the shot. And he said, but we didn't do it in the bathtub in the backyard or anything like that. He says, we went out to a public place in a great lake. He says, and the militant Muslims were there watching. And he says, I got baptized. He says, I immediately had to go into hiding because they put a death kit or a fatwa on me. He says, I went into hiding. He says, I was trying to escape. He says, his father was a general in the army. He says, I had all the military looking for me. In the, and he says, and the angels of the Lord protected me. See? And the, the wild thing is, he says, as I was exiting the country, and it's a long story, but he says, I got word that the man who baptized me was martyred because he did my baptism. He says, I owe that guy something. When we come to baptism, we, we're reminding ourselves that we're making a break from the past and we owe everything to the Lord now. We are his. And he is ours. That's a, that's a significant uh, change than just going to have a baptismal. It means that I'm decided to, to follow the Lord in obedience. And that's important. I commend, in fact, when I was in Ecuador, I, I had the opportunity to, to baptize 28 people in, uh, in the baptismal pool there because the missionary was sick. And that was exciting. They thought it was cold when the water was 72 degrees. And uh, because at that time, at 70 degrees, they put the kids in snowsuits. So they were working into the chilly Jordan when they came in there. I'm, actually, I'm in the tank having a good time, you know, swishing around, having a good time. You know, I think it's pretty nice and warm, but not down there. But it was an interesting response because in that culture, baptism indicated that not only were they going to join the church, but they have chosen to renounce any other faith and any other religion. They were not going to believe just random things. They were going, that was a true test of discipleship. And it is for us too. It symbolizes the breaking of the past and as Romans chapter 6 says, a new way of life. John apparently had some insight into some of this stuff. Later on, John, in John chapter 3, verse 30, after this event, he says, see, they said, well, what do you think, John, you know, you've been preaching this baptism, and here comes this other guy, and your disciples are leaving, and he says, he must increase, I must decrease. I would just submit to you that some of the events that happen here are not because Jesus needed to be baptized, and yet he did need to be baptized. How many are now confused? Jesus did not need to be baptized to of repentance of sin because he was sinless. Okay? But he did need to be baptized because, behold, the Lamb of God, the Lamb was always washed by the priest before it was sacrificed. And at the commencing of Jesus' earthly ministry, it was necessary for Jesus, the Lamb of God, to be washed by John the Baptist, who was of the priestly lineage. His father, Zechariah, remember, got the word. He's, he's struck without any, uh, he's, he's struck dumb, so to speak, in, in, when he's on his time there as a priest. And they, they thought his, his son's name would be Zacharias, but God said, no, you're going to call him John. And he gave him his name. First time he speaks is when he says the word John. But the interesting thing here, it was important that the lamb, was washed. What more appropriate person than someone who was calling people to repentance and closeness to God? Boy, that's the message of the gospel, isn't it? When you think about it, we can't get saved without the Lamb of God, but boy, the whole setup was what well, was uniquely crafted in heaven. And enough was revealed to John that he sort of had an idea what was going on Later on, he says, when he's in prison, hey, could you just, he sends the guys over and says, just tell me, are you the one? And Jesus says, oh, just tell them that the deaf hear and the blind, you know, see and, and all this kind 
the deaf hear. Yeah, that's right. Dumb speak. I, I, was, I thought I had them confused there. I am doing different things, which have been exciting too. But uh, Jesus says the, to the one who would follow me that John says that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. So John sort of had an idea of knew his limitations. He wasn't there to do the whole thing, and he was not the Savior. But he says, here comes one that's, I'm not worthy. Well, the baptism of Jesus. John was a little hesitant. He was a little reluctant. Jesus, he knew, had nothing to repent of, but it was necessary for this lamb to be washed prior to the sacrifice. So, he, you know, Jesus said, let it be so. Paul saw baptism as a, as a change in the believer's life. In Romans 6, he says, it was baptized to newness of life. But he says, we are, we are dead in our sins, trespasses sin. We are baptized. We identify with the Lord in his death. And also, not just his death, but his resurrection. And so he gives an outward symbol of what really has transpired. It was important that Jesus sent that message because we need a change of heart. We need to have a break from the past. We need to have our sins in the past. We need to, we need to make some choices to move forward in the spirit of the Lord. Because from that, on, from that time on, everything that Jesus does is in the power of the Holy Spirit and you and I can't take a step without uh, being in the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do something productive unless we have his help. So Jesus sets a precedent. And so when they're coming out of the water, it, you and I identify that as the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same spirit that raised from Christ from the dead will quicken our mortal body. What? To live for him. To do the things that he wants us to do. To be his example. To be his ambassador to this world. So Jesus did it for uh, several reasons. One is to give us a prototype of where we should be going. But he did it also so that all the law would be fulfilled. Everything that Jesus does from here on out is ministry oriented. The first 30 or so years, uh, he was taking care of his family. And now he says, now we're making a different switch to the spiritual part of my being. The reason I really came to seek and save that which is lost. So the baptism of Jesus was... Sort of unique and yet a prototype for you and I. You know, the interesting thing is that John listened. John did it. He didn't understand everything. You know, sometimes uh, it's like when Jesus does his first miracle not too far hereafter. At the water turning into wine and Mary, his mother just says, do what he tells you to do. Well, that's simple. You know, that's the same thing you and I are told. Do whatever he tells you to do. Hmm. Just a thought. Second, you know, uh, work here, when G John is reluctant, John was really concerned. He says he was not someone who cared about the reputation. Obviously, he didn't care about the religious because he calls them a brood of vipers to their face. He cares about only his relationship with God, and he felt really uncomfortable doing this baptism until Jesus said, let it be so, so that all righteousness will be fulfilled. He was trying to not assume things that were, I kind of say, not given to him. He wasn't willing to overstep where he was at. Uh, he was willing to just do, he was willing to be second fiddle, if you please. He didn't mind that at all. In fact, he sort of looked forward to that. And he didn't want to be heralded as, a, oh, this is the one, the guy who, even Jesus was baptized. And I don't think he put that in his resume afterwards. It wasn't, it, it was sort of a, he was almost embarrassed in one sense and very fearful until the Lord says, do it. Interesting. So we have the, we have John's call to repentance. We have Jesus coming there. The third thing is God's approval. And, you know, when you do the will of God, 
not everybody says great things about you. Last week in the sermon, Jesus healed people and the Pharisees murmured within their hearts. And he did everything right. The very son of God. They, it was really, really, uh, they were really upset with him. Because he changed their reality, the way they saw things, the way they were religious. And he said, no, nah, it's not going to be. <laughs> they didn't like their world being changed. I just want to say something to you. You can do the will of God and it may not go well for you. But Jesus was not interested in what man thought. When the father says, this is my beloved son, and the dove comes, it was heaven saying to the Lord Jesus, you're following the plan. You're doing things just... Who do you... Do you think Jesus needed that affirmation? I mean... Why did the voice come from heaven? Because he'd always go away and talk to his father anyway. So we know that there was a great relationship. He would go in the early morning and spend time. Who was that word for? This is my beloved son. Like Jesus didn't know it. It was so the people that were there. We know that John heard it. We don't know, you know, sometimes God speaks to your heart and nobody else knows it kind of deal. But we know that John gets it. And I wonder how many other people paid attention when God spoke. We don't see the reaction of the crowd. We just see the, we see this continued plan, this purpose, this walk of faith in Christ because the Father declared it. The presence of God the Holy Spirit came in the presence uh, in the form of a dove. We often think of doves as peace. And here comes the Prince of Peace accompanied by a visible symbol that we could get. And yet the people who came there, some of them missed it. I mean, with, with their, were their receptors messed up? Sometimes, when I, just to ask you this question as we're going along my uh, my wife would haul the kids around the car and one time you know, they're yakking yakking and she said oh you guys drive me nuts how many parents have said that you know I was normal till I had children of course the kids think the parents drive nuts it's a fair game and one day Rob's driving along and she just totally tunes out and the one boy is in the back going you drive me nuts you drive me nuts you drive me nuts. You know, and something happened she goes I heard him like the tape recorder got stuck, you know, woo, 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 you know <laughs> saying the things that, that they had heard, you know. She goes, man, I've got to be careful what I say because the tape recorder's on. <laughs> How many times do we miss something that's going on because we tune it out? And it seemed at least John the Baptist and Jesus were tuned into heaven. We're not sure if the, the Pharisees got the radio frequency, you know what I mean? And it had to do with the heart. It had to do with their receptivity to, because when you find the truth about the kingdom thing, most of the stuff we would do in, uh, instinctively are wrong. Because we're born in sin. We're raised by the thinking of this world. And so God has to rearrange our thinking, wash our mind with this word so we get the right kind of habits, get the right kind of attitudes. We get the things that are, are really bringing glory and honor to God. That's what we call taking a walk in the Christian faith because I'm learning to do things Christ-like, not Jeff-like. I already knew how to do Jeff-like stuff. And I need the help of the Lord to influence me and I need the Holy Spirit to bring his word to me to get it right. Amen. And so do you. So as we're walking through this life, you know, as we've been baptized, and maybe you haven't been baptized, I want to encourage you to do that in obedience to the Lord. We believe, I believe, we are you, just a fine tuning of uh, theology. You, or at least we, are Anabaptists. You say, what does that mean? That means that we believe that baptism follows faith in Christ. We believe, you know, you can baptize an infant, but they're just wet. They don't know. Really, we're dedicating mom and dad nose deals. But when we come to faith in Christ, we ask to be our Savior, we choose to be water baptized because we made a conscious decision to follow Jesus. 
And so if you haven't followed him in obedience, I want to encourage you to do that. I am going to get to baptize people in the River Jordan. I was so excited about that until the pastor's wife that we're going with says, I, I've been there five times and it's so cold I didn't want to get in the water. And I think, great. You volunteered for me to go into the cold water, but you haven't been there yet, lady. <laughs> I was having some mixed feelings about that. My parents had been there, and she goes, Jeff, it is, it, Mom said it was so rocky, she understood why Jesus walked on the water. Because <laughs> the rocks would cut your feet. Like, Great. So in August, I'll be there. To, and, and I've already been volunteered. Janet says, oh, Pastor Kettering will help Tony. And I'm thinking, I don't recall signing up for that. What a neat thing to do to go to the place and to be able to experience what Jesus experienced. I don't know what that's going to do to me. Everyone says you'll be different. <laughs> I, how do you know that I've already been different? So I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll like straighten me out. I don't know. But at this moment, God speaks from heaven for me, for everybody around there. I don't think it was, this is not a news flash to Jesus. He already knew who he was. Don't you know, I need to be about my father's business. That was last week. Hey, Mom, Mary, hey, give her the program here, lady. Now, he was never disrespectful, I'm sure. He was a normal kid. Played and did all the other things that other kids do. In this passage, though, I see the Son of God totally submitted to the plan, the will of the Father. He sets an example for me that I need to do to follow God. I've got to do what he asked me to do. I've got to honor him. And, and not only that, but God says, by the way, I'm just sending the spirit to, to put a seal of approval on this whole deal. And now it's for us to see. Because I'm sure that some were wondering, I wonder who this guy is. And John's going, the Lamb of God who takes away. And people are going, huh? And then to hear the voice. Well, you know, some people are very realistic and they say, I'll believe it when I see it. But faith says, you know what? Having not seen it yet, I still believe. I wasn't there, but I believe these events were really accurate. And there was a whole lot more going on than probably we can even comprehend. Can I just come in for a landing and say it like this? Serving God, like John the Baptist and like Jesus, means knowing his plan. Do you know God's plan? What, what does he want you to do? I can tell you this. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. you know, to live for him. To, to love him. To, to trust in him. So are you doing the will of God? Do you know his plan? Secondly, knowing and doing are two different things. We all know how to diet. Not everybody's doing it. Our children know how to be obedient, and they go to someone else's house, and they come home and say, oh, your son, your daughter was just so well behaved. You're saying, are we talking about the same kid I sent? And they know better, but doing different. Well, I now make it to us. Sometimes we know better than what we do. And it's not a matter of the power of God. It's a matter of the will of Jeff. More certain own name here. You know, it's a matter of my will wanting to do his will. John the Baptist said, nevertheless, I'm going to do it because you, you, you asked me to do it. And I'm sure at that moment, John didn't quite totally understand. But God had a plan. Sometimes God is going to ask you to do things that you might not totally understand. It's not, it's not like... A, good or bad or anything like that, but sometimes he just leads you in the way that you should go. The, the other thing that I, I see in here is that Jesus f t demonstrates to us that he was totally dependent on the Holy Spirit because the next chapter, the Spirit drives him into wilderness into a place of temptation and you're going like, that doesn't sound like the God I know. But he came out in the Spirit. That's the whole killer there. He went in the Spirit. He went by the direction of the Holy Spirit and he came out triumphant. Sometimes you and I are going to have to be hanging on for dear life when we go into the tough stuff. Depending on the Holy Spirit so we can come out triumphant. Baptism is a break where, where 
I was to who I'm becoming and where, where I will be in the future. And Jesus says to his disciples at the very last, he says, I want you to go. I want you to baptize. I want you to disciple. He just wasn't talking to a select few. He meant all of us to do that. You and I, we are changed by the power of God. Amen. And with his help, we live for him. Jesus showed us how to do it. Jesus was baptized as the Lamb of God. Because, like Wayne said, he showed his love at the cross. Bow your heads with me for a moment. You're here today. You say, boy, that's, well, maybe I understand a little better why Jesus was baptized. What's that got to do with me, preacher? Well, here's the question. Are you walking with the Lord? Are you doing what he wants? Are you know his plan and are you doing his will? Are you depending on the Holy Spirit for your enablement and your help and your strength? Have you made a break from the past? Or is your past still haunting you? You know what? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I want you to know that. All of us have a past. I am so glad for the forgiveness and the grace of God. You're here today. You say, I've been baptized, but I haven't been where I need to be. I've never committed my life to the Lord. Maybe we'll start there. You need to commit your life to the Lord. You're here today. You raise your hand. I want to pray with you that you would ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to help you. Take away your sin. Anybody at all, mom or dad, young, old. Most of us have known the Lord and post-baptism, we probably have not always walked in the Spirit. This is not a guilt trip. This is a chance to get it right. You know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The gift of God. Boy. The gift that he gives us is grace and his mercy. It's not for sale, but it can be received if we do that by faith. Maybe post-salvation, you've struggled. Earlier I said, it's a battle. It's not a battle you have to do by yourself or all alone. Today, you're saying, Pastor, today I'm struggling. I need the help of the Lord. I've been baptized, but the knowing and doing has been a difficult thing. But you say, today I'm saying, okay, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to depend on you. You raise your hand, I'm going to pray with you. Probably a lot of hands here. And so we're being, on, we're being honest with God. When you raise your hand, that's between you and God. You know, some people say, well, I was watching, and so-and-so should have raised their hand. Well, you know, bad attitude, and keep it to yourself. We, we can point out everybody else's problem, but you know, it's me. I'm dealing with me. You know what? I really don't care what anyone else thinks. If i got to get it right with God, this is a good day to do it. We're going to sing the song that Maria is playing, and this is an invitation. You know how to talk to God, and he knows how to talk to you. But we're going to sing this song, Come Holy Spirit, come and cleanse me. Bring me to the place that I need to be. I need thee. That's your prayer. You can sing it along with me as we sing, because I need them all the time. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Why don't you make an altar right where you're at? Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own special way. Let's stand and sing that. Come. Holy Spirit, I need Thee. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in Thy strength and Thy power. Come in Thine own special way. If you just want to take a step forward to the altar, we're just going to play, make this a place of commitment. I don't know about you, but I have to re-up all the time. Lord, I need Your help. Help me today. Every day I pray, Lord, give me the strength to do your will. You just want to take a step. Listen, this is for the believers. This is for us as God is at work in our hearts. This is not for the failures. This is the people that are striving after the things of God. 
If you just want to come and say, we're going to sing this again, you can make an altar where you're at, you can come down here. I like coming to the altar because it's a place of surrender. That's, that's where we surrender. You just come as we sing. Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. That's our prayer to the Lord. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own special way. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me. What we're saying, Lord, is work in my heart. Lord, I know you're working in people's hearts, Lord. Sometimes I'm not always, my, my awareness, I'm not paying attention. John paid attention. He was listening to the still, small voice of God. Jesus was God. He was in the plan. Lord, some of those people, you walked there and they didn't get it. Lord, help us to get it today. Don't pass us by. Maybe you just feel constrained to come and pray with someone or, or you just want to stand where you're at and lift your hands and who cares what time it is? Who cares about anybody else in the row in front or back? It's you and Jesus right now. You say, Lord, here I am. Working my life. I come to you like the song said, humbly, because I have great need for you. Lord, if for every hungry heart you will fill, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Lord, that's what we want to do. That's what John baptized about. That's what Jesus revealed, the righteousness of God. He showed us how to live. So, Lord God, I pray that in our walks, the fine-tuning your spirit does, nudges us closer, uh, chips off some of the rough spots, gives us uh, the presence of God in a greater way, reveal spiritual things to our spiritual man. Lord, I pray that our hearts will be drawn close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. Leading side. Lord, I pray that you'd help each one of us as we take steps of obedience today. As we do your will, as we depend upon your spirit to strengthen us and to help us. There's a world that needs you, and you've sent us. Without you, we can't do it, but with you, we can do all things. So, Lord, I pray that as we listen to John and we come and draw closer to you, Lord, that you could use us in a greater way, that many would hear the word of God 
and that we would fulfill and live the Great Commission for Jesus' sake. All of God's people said, Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Amen. Quietness of this moment, the Lord's dealing with people, and you just say that's there's still time at the altar. Still time to say, if you're going to leave this sanctuary, just go quietly. We ask, we're not, we're not in a hurry here. Maybe you want to still come and pray with someone. We'd love to have that. Just don't disturb the folks who are seeking the presence of the Lord. God bless you.